Hey guys, how are you doing today? I thought I'd do a nice and light episode on taking a plant that has been in water propagation and moving it over and transitioning it over into a soil substrate. So let's go over that today. So I have a Raphidophora decursiva here in water propagation. And this is a propagation, a little propagule that I got from Candace, who I did a houseplant home tour with. And she had a nice sizable specimen plant. And she said, hey, I'll just give you a cutting because I actually thought I had a cutting of Raphidophora decursiva. I got one that was essentially just a stem and a couple nodes and it popped out and it happened to be an Epiprenum pinnatum. So I thought it was a Raphidophora, turns out to be an Epiprenum pinnatum. And turns out it's actually really difficult to figure out what the difference is of Raphidophora, Epiprenum, um, Syndapsis, all those different ones. That's a future episode actually, by the way. So you'll have to tune in here for that. Long story short, I didn't have a Raphidophora. Candace was sweet enough to give me one. And it's been sitting in this jar and developing these roots in here. And if any of you have taken the houseplant masterclass, you'll see a section on propagation and just how different water roots are or roots that are sitting in water, um, how different they are from roots that have maybe been propagating in a substrate. So something like um, coconut coir or uh, like a peat moss mix or even in like a perlite. So what I'd like to do is not just take the water propagation roots and then just stick them into sub, like some, just any old substrate. I do like to transition them over. And sometimes a good transition medium might actually be LECA, that's the lightweight expanded clay aggregates. I'm actually gonna be using, one of my favorite things to use is actually vermiculite. Sometimes I'll actually just put the propagation in vermiculite and water. You could also use some perlite and know folks who do that. I did a pretty extensive episode on the differences between perlite and vermiculite, and there are some critical differences. So if you haven't seen that episode, I'll actually link to it here. But, and I'll go over some of the characteristics um, of vermiculite and perlite. But that's what we're gonna do to transition this guy over. And um, I don't have like much here to, to show you. I mean, I have, oh, and by the way, I do have, <laughs> I do have this, don't think I'm drinking the fertilizer. I actually made homemade root beer, which, that's for a whole other story. And oh, and it's actually really delicious. Um, the, I get a lot of questions where they're like, where's your normal house? Where's your backdrop? Okay, so for those of you who may not know and have those questions down in the description, this is a new common house that my friends and I, we ended up going in on, a, on a, some land up in upstate New York, and we're going to shift to living communally. It's gonna be a long transition for us as well, just like this route transitions from water into a substrate. It's gonna be a transition for us as well. So for those of you who have questions about that and say, hey, where's your normal house? Um, it's very hard for me to, to film in both areas because the, the camera equipment is here. So oftentimes I'd have to lug the camera equipment back on a bus if I were to shoot in Brooklyn. So it's, it's, it's a little more challenging this time, but hopefully you don't mind that I don't have as many plants in the background as I typically have in my, my Brooklyn apartment, but um, this home is gonna go under, um, undergo some renovation probably next year, so I don't wanna fill it up with too many, too many plants. I know that's a really hard thing to do. Okay, so I'm gonna just try to get this out of here. Let me hide my eyes so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm going to move this out of the water. It's actually quite robust, so. I probably should have chosen a bit more of a wide mouth jar for this. And then I'm gonna show you the roots. Okay, so that's what the roots look like. Now again, I don't have close-ups. I'm not looking at this under a microscope or anything along those lines. But typically when you're rooting this in, say, you know, more of a substrate, like I said, uh, you know, a fur bark mix or coconut coir mix or peat moss or anything along those lines, then you're going to get a much more branched pattern with the roots. Um, these are basically naked roots in the water and they're, they're not really robust. Um, they're pretty thin. So I don't like to just kind of toss 
these roots that have been in water propagation and all of a sudden toss them into a substrate uh, that is like a, a more, I guess, meaty substrate. So I still want to have a substrate that's really nice and airy. And um, do I have two of these? No, no, they're connected. I almost like forgot what it, what it actually looks like. And I should just go over a little more of uh, the natural history of Raphidophora de Cursiva so you know more about it. This is an Asian aroid. So you'll find it in China and Indochina. And so it's an old word, old world aroid. And decursiva, it actually just means decursive, which uh, I think probably refers to the, the leaf base. And that just means that it, you know, it's, it goes down the stem. And, and you can actually see that. I don't know if, if I could show that to you close up, but you could see that the leaf base basically connects to the petiole and it just kind of goes down the stem. So I'm guessing that's what the De Cursiva comes in when we, we talk about the, the species name. I wish I had a photo of this when I first got the cutting because one of these leaves actually came out and I have this nice little growth structure happening here too. And I have another cutting actually. I took a sec separate cutting of this and it's, it's in water propagation right now. And essentially I just put it in water propagation because when I came here, it's just one of the easiest things to do. I stuck this in my Eastern window and, um, and away we went. It, that was many, 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 many months ago. So I have this little container. There's like a little potting medium and uh, potting container in there and it allows for water to drip down. I might actually pot that up in here. What I'm going to use is this vermiculite. Let me show you what it looks like. And basically vermiculite and, and perlite are these like puffed, puffed uh, stones. This one is actually a little thinner than normal, so I might actually add some perlite in with this. Part of the difference between perlite and vermiculite as it relates to how water reacts to it is vermiculite actually takes on the water like a sponge, and so it, it holds on to that water, whereas perlite has more of the water around the actual puffed volcanic stone. This is perlite. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna mix this in. Let me get a bowl. And this goes without saying, but like, you know, the perlite, it's pretty dusty. If um, often when I'm, you could wet it a little bit, wet it down. Uh, I don't have my spray bottle here, but don't, don't get that into your lungs. So if you see me kind of stepping back or whatever, and I'm gonna mix in some vermiculite. And I'm just gonna mix that together here. And this vermiculite, you could get it in many different grades. Um, this one happens to be really tiny. Typically that's not what it looks like. I might have actually crushed the bag in the back over there, so. But I'm gonna do a combination of perlite and vermiculite. And that, now there's been some really interesting studies about when you're propagating in 100% perlite or if you're uh, propagating in 100% vermiculite, which one is better? And again, I talk about that in the vermiculite and perl versus perlite video. Uh, and I think that's really interesting, but I, I know growers who do 100% perlite, and I know growers who do uh, a combination of vermiculite, I know growers who do sand, so, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, you have to, you know, pick what you, what you wanna do. Can't get enough of that root beer, it's so good. I'll have to do their like recipe up on uh, Flock Finger Lakes, the other channel. I don't think it would be appropriate here, but it would be appropriate on that, on that channel. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this in here. You can see I just added a, a little bit in there. And um, you could even, if you want, start with maybe 20% of the, like an epiphytic orchid mix. Uh, which is just basically this bark mix here. Let me show you. I, I might actually do some of that too. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let me hide my eyes. That's the only way that this actually gets in focus. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. I might actually add some of that in there because this is a good, a good transition. I'll probably transition this plant into this epiphytic mix. And Raphidophora de Cursiva, if I go back to the natural history of it, it's considered a liana. And lianas are basically woody vines. So they're growing in 
tropical forests, monsoon forests, and what they basically do is they skirt all along around the ground looking for an ample tree. You might see them snaking around stones and everything along those lines. And then they'll find a tree and then they get to be, they get to be a very, very thick woody vine that basically wraps around the tree or up the tree. And uh, they put out these exquisitely fenestrated leaves. You could see this fenestration actually starting here. But just imagine that giant leaf and lots of finger-like fenestrations going off the left and right side of it. Um, very beautiful, very robust plant. And you could get them, I've seen them in stores and, and as cuttings as already pretty mature leaves, but I, I think that they would revert back to being like juvenile form if you don't give them something to climb up on. All right, so. This is pretty good. Now this is, a, again, a very airy mixture. And I did choose to actually put some of the, the epiphytic mix in there, but it's primarily perlite and vermiculite. And I'm just going to water this. And it might even sit in a little bit of water, but since it's used to actually sitting in the water, then that's fine. And the difference between having waterlogged roots and water in roots. The thing is that there's oxygen in the water. This one's a little green in algae. I should have probably had cleaned it out, but it didn't seem to mind. Um, but if you have too waterlogged of soil, basically all those air pockets within the soil are filled with water and there's no oxygen. For, so you just want to make sure that you don't, uh, once you put it to substrate, you're not like oversaturating it because then you take away the oxygen. So I'm going to keep this in here. I'm going to, I'm going to basically water this plant and um, again, not fill up all those air pockets. And then I'll probably keep it in here for maybe like a couple weeks. It is kind of the fall, so it's not going to be growing as robustly as I would. So typically I would like to be doing this in like the spring or the summer months when it's really actually, you know, putting out some growth. But I wanted to get this done before the winter. I didn't want to have it sit in the water um, through the winter months. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, water this a little, monitor it, and probably in a couple weeks I'll move it over to its final resting place, <laughs> which is, uh, at least for a while, which is going to be a proper pot and, um, and moving it over to probably the epiphytic mix or a combination of the epiphytic mix with like a regular potting medium. But that's essentially it. It's easy peasy. It's just like, like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be a, a pretty lightweight video, but maybe you learned a little bit more about the, uh, the natural history of Raffidophyta de cursiva or that you know, I'm not drinking fertilizer water <laughs> or anything along those lines, but hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking to up your plant game, then check out our suite of courses and offerings, including houseplant basics, troubleshoot your houseplants, the 125 houseplant care spreadsheet, and the houseplant masterclass. The courses provide you a certificate of completion when you're finished and a wealth of information that you could use to impress both your plants and your friends. More information can be found over at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're seeking more information about gardening outdoors and homesteading in the country, then check out our new channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. See you there. Cheers. <laughs>